Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Daniel D. Robinson, and today we're going to continue our conversation. This time it's about proportional and non-proportional relationships and tables. Our lesson outcomes we hope to achieve is for students to examine situations to decide whether two quantities are proportional to each other by checking for a constant multiple between measures of x and of y when given a table or when required to create a table. Students study examples of relationships that are not proportional in addition to those that are. So here's an interesting question. You decide to run a long distance race. There are two different teams you can join. Team A runs at a constant rate of 2.5 miles per hour. Team B runs four miles in the first hour and then two miles per hour after that. Create a table for each, show, each team showing the distances that would be run for times of one, two, three, four, five, and six hours. Which team will win the race if, race if the race were 4.5 miles long? So we're expected to create a table. So let's get to it. So here's my table. I have a team A and a team B. Team A time is in hours on the left because that's the first thing I need to have. And the next thing I need to know is what is the distance for every hour? So in my first hour, Team A said they were going to do a constant, which means a regular rate of speed. So they were doing a constant rate. So in one hour, they did a constant rate of 2.5 miles. So that means every hour after that, they did an additional 2.5 miles. So in the second hour, I'd have to add on 2.5 to that, which would give me a total of 5 miles. In the third hour, I have to add on 2.5 to that. That would give me a total of 7.5 miles. So each hour, I have to add on an additional 2.5. And I notice every time the hours went up, you could also multiply them by 2.5 and that would give you the distance in miles. 1 times 2.5 is 2.5, 2 times 2.5 is 5, 3 times 2.5 is 7.5, so on and so on. So that constant multiplier of 2.5 is very interesting and we're going to talk about that number later on. Team B did something different. In the first hour, they said they were going to walk, run four miles straight out. Then in the second, every hour after that, they said they're just going to do two additional miles. So they ran four miles first, and then they did two more miles. So what do you think they're going to have in total miles so far in two hours? If you said six, you are correct. Because they added two more to four. Notice they didn't do four miles every time. They did two after the four, first hour. So every time they're going to do two more in each hour. So in the third hour, they're going to do two more than six. And two plus six is, you got it, eight. In the fourth hour, they're going to do two more than that. And that's 10. In the fifth hour, 12. And in the sixth hour, what do you think? Right. 14 miles. So that is the chart that we created to find out which one is doing which. Now, they asked us in the question, let's go back to it, which team will win the race if the race were 4.5 miles long? So we need to look at our chart to see Where's 4.5 miles? Well, 4.5 miles is in here. And for Team A, they did it somewhere within two hours. So it took them two hours to do five miles. So they did it uh, probably a little less than two hours. Because in two hours, they did five miles. So they did it a little less than two hours. And let's look at Team B. They did 
six miles. So the 4.5 mile, miles is a little bit past the one hour, but in two hours, they did six six miles. Well, if it took them two hours to do six miles, and it only took them two hours to do five miles in Team A, obviously the winning answer has got to be choice Team A, because they took shorter time to do less miles, so they probably got the 4.5 much faster than Team B, because they got the six miles in two hours, so they were running a little slow. It said on the top here about proportional, which team distance is proportional to time. Now, I mentioned if you look at that constant timing of 2.5, that shows you have a proportion because you can multiply to get the miles. So when you multiply the hours, you get the miles. But over here, there is no multiplier. 1 times 4 would give you 4, but if I kept multiplying by 4, I would have 4 times 2. That would give me 8, not 6. So this 1B is not the constant. It's not a distance proportional to time. So team A would be that. And remember, when we're talking proportional, we're talking miles for every hour. So team A would be proportional. And we're going to talk more about that. Here's another example. We have some runners using this relationship we just talked about. If the members on the team ran for 10 hours, how far would each member run on each team? Well, I better get my calculator because I notice, let's go back to this chart. Each team ran a total of six hours and we want to run 10 hours. So that means we have to run four more hours. Well, let's deal with Team A. They said they're running 2.5 miles every one hour. That was constant. So they're going to do that for four more hours. So let's go to Team A. Team A needs four more hours. And they're doing that at 2.5 miles per miles per hour, and that'll give them a distance of 10. So that would be 10 more that they have uh, miles that they would have to do. So, so four hours times 2.5, let me go back and get that decimal in there, 2.5, and that'll give us 10. Let's just make sure, yes, that's 10. So they do additional 10 more miles. So Team A is doing additional 10 more miles. Well, in six hours, if you remember, Team A did... 15 miles at six hours, so they got to do additional 10. So if I add on 10 more miles to what they've done already, 10 plus the 15 will give them a total of 25 miles. So Team A has 25 miles. Well, let's look at Team B. Team B said they're going to do an additional two miles every time they go on an extra hour. Now, you could count up an extra two hours, so seven plus two, seven hours would be would be 16 8 hours would be 18 9 hours
it would be 20 and 10 hours would be 22. So in 10 hours, this is another way you could do it instead of doing it the other way that I did, just counting up the hours and increasing each one by two. And that would have given them 22 miles in 10 hours. So we wanted to know the distances for team A, they would have 25 miles. Team B would have 22 miles in 10 hours. Will there always be a winning team no matter what length of the course? Hmm. Will we have a winning team always? Well, let's look. Let's see, are there any distances that are equal? Because we know the time in one hour, they travel a distance, so team of 2.5, so Team B would have won the race because they traveled four hours in one hour, so they were faster. In two hours, team, I'm sorry, uh, in one hour, yeah, they were faster. Team B was faster because they did four miles in one hour. That's fast. And in two hours, team B, team A did five hours, five miles, and team B did six miles in two hours. So looks like the fastest time would be, faster distance would be team, and let's take a good look at that because they did a six miles. So their team A would be faster because they did um, less miles and two hours. So let's look at that. Okay, let's see now. I was saying that team A did two hours. They did five miles. Team B did two hours and they did six miles. So team B was faster in six. In three hours, team A was 7.5. Team in three hours, team B was eight in three hours, three hours, so they were faster again. And in four hours, I see they both did 10 hours, 10 miles. So they're tied. So there's in four hours, they're both tied. So the answer to that question, would there be a winning team no matter what the length of the course? No, there's going to be a tie in one way over one way or the other because of the four hours there was a tie so check your understanding make sure you rewatch the tape i hope you got something out of it and if you have questions write them down tomorrow we're going to pick up with a question that looks like this, talking about that chart, explain how do you know the distance for the other team is not proportional to the time. So you might want to watch the video again. I might have given some hints about proportionality. Here's a question that's pretty good. If the race were 12 miles long, which team will win and how much sooner compared to the other team will they finish? So that's a pretty good question. So ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end and this is Dr. Robinson. So till next time, write me if you have questions. Take care.